Hey everyone, we are back with another episode of Team Talks, people. Yes, hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone's had a wonderful week. And I'm joined by John Bostock and I'm joined by Kendrick Kenji Gare. But before we get into this, remember that we are sponsored by 316 Cologne. The best place to get all your garments, get all your clothes looking fresh and stylish. Remember, you got the hats as well. Remember, shorts. This is the best place high quality, and also a, a clothing line that is fueled by faith. Amen. Then one of the most important parts of this is that it's a movement as much as it is a clothing line. So guys, go over to the 316 Clo, uh Instagram, like that page, go to the store, buy the gums, and help support the movement and the inspiration that is behind 316 Clo. I'm joined by John and Kenji. How you guys doing? You guys have been doing you guys have been doing all right in terms of the field, but how are you doing just off the field as well? Someone scored their first goal yeah. recently. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing really well. <laughs> I'm doing really well, feeling blessed. Um, honestly, um really happy to have scored my first goal as well in the season. Um, I know it's gonna be a big season for me personally, also in the team. So um just just walking by faith. And uh, I know that everything's going to fall into place. So I'm really happy. Great, man. A little round of applause for the Gores expecting their first child. Great. Wonderful yeah. news. Beat on the ground. We receive it. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. No, I'm, well, I'm, well, I'm well, KJ. It's great to be back, you know, um, amongst two men of God speaking about the game we love most and uh, a really important topic today, which we're looking forward to getting into. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, and uh, Kenji, blessings to you and, and and your wife and your your future child as well. We love to see that. But yes, John, you are correct. Today's topic is an important topic because uh, this this topic has been going on for around eighteen months and recently just came to its conclusion. Uh, this is a sensitive topic indeed because of the nature of of what happened, and we are just here to to give our insight into not if someone was right or wrong or who did what, but how do we operate in these situations um, as, as Christian and obviously for, for Kenji and, and John as players as well. And uh, this sub, uh, topic is surrounded by Mason Greenwood. That is what we are talking about, the situation that he found himself in uh, due to uh, his actions and alleged actions uh, towards his partner. And um, yeah, we are just going to deep dive into that to, to see what we can what we can learn from from that situation and how can we as men really move forward um, and how as young footballers can move forward uh, in these uh, in this life and in those situations as well. So so yes, thank you for for joining us for this topic and we are we are, we want to get into it and obviously. The news broke on uh, in January 2022. Um, it the images and voice recording of of what was uh, accused of Mason Greenwood found itself on the internet, and it was spread around like, really quickly, like just like that, like overnight. All the all this information, all this imagery um, came came onto our onto our phones, onto our apps, onto our screens, and. For me, it was very, uh, it was very shocking and surprising because it came out of nowhere. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but um, as 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 footballers, how, how did you react to when these first um, images and news broke out about this situation with uh, Mason Greenwood? Honestly, when I first heard the news and even heard the um, the voice notes and the the pictures came through. Um, my heart, my heart, my heart hurt, man. Um, I felt, I felt a little bit sick as well. Um, to be completely honest, um, of what I heard, um, but it also hit hit me in a way that was like, well, I was once there. I was once there at Manchester United. So how must you know the players also be feeling with this situation? How must the atmosphere be as well um, around this whole thing? And 
it felt a little bit close to home as well because obviously uh, you know being being in the academy there and, and experiencing Manchester United it was it hit me really hard to be honest and I couldn't and I couldn't really listen to it all um, I remember listening to the first the first bit and I was like whoa I need to take a second here like what what's going on um, so it did hit me really hard to be honest uh, to be really real with you it did it did hit me yeah. Are you on mute, John? Yeah, thanks, Kenji. I think you know when when this leaked, it was um, it was shocking for the football world. Let's be honest, because look, let, let's 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 be let's be completely um, transparent and just and say what it is. Mason Greenwood, he's a wonder kid. Yeah, the talent he has earmarked for greatness from players who I know personally have played with him. They say the boy's got everything. Left, left foot, right. right. Take free kicks with both feet. Score, um, you know, coming into in England camps. Um, it, after Harry Kane, you're looking at England's next best number nine. He's earmarked for it. I know you got quality strikers like Abraham, Wilson, um, you know, other players who, who who can score goals. But that real talisman for a nation is probably was earmarked to be him. Um, so when this news broke, um, I listened to what. You know, so long ago now, um, I don't really remember the, the real details and I, I don't really want to go back there because we moved on from that now, but it, 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 it was disturbing. You know, it was disturbing to hear what happened and, and the way that he was talking and whatnot. Um, and it's quite rare that you get an insight into a, a, a couple's relationship because, you know, in times gone, guys, like we live in crazy times now where everyone's news is everyone's news. In times gone, we would never be privy to that kind of intimate conversation or what happened. But for whatever reason, it was leaked. And um, it was clear to see that this young player, he needed help. To feel like you can speak to any person the way he spoke to and the things that came out, it was worrying. And look, we're believers here. And look, we are not here to gossip or put anyone's name down. In fact, where we're, where we're going to go with this, we're going to show you, in fact, how we all are in need of grace. But we have to go by the scriptures. And the scripture says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yeah. So if you want to know what someone's really like, listen to them over a period of time. But hear what comes out of their heart. Um, and the fact that these things were coming from this player's mouth, it shows that there's the heart issue. You know, that his heart isn't where... Maybe it needs to be, maybe there's a hardness there, like we all have at times, but that was quite worrying because it affects other people, especially his partner. So when it came out, it was it, it was shocking um and and um and and worrying. Um but I'm also aware that most people's hearts are not where they should be, you know. So that was my initial uh yeah. reaction of from honest with you, KJ. Yeah, no, I hear that. Um obviously as a fan. It's 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 a different kind of perspective because you guys could potentially be like rah like that could be my teammate that could be me in terms of like not saying you guys do that but you guys are in those shoes of of of, of that position of of uh, privilege and power but as a fan you 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 just sitting there looking at a player that many admired I I, I was a fan of Mason we a big fan of Mason Greenwood I know um, that like you said uh, John that the talent was there lots of hope for him and and as a fan seeing that I, it, I made my heart sink felt for felt for the, his, his partner as well but also it's just like why have you done that <laughs> you know what i mean like what has possessed you to to move in that way say those things and and allegedly do those things to your partner as well i just didn't i just didn't understand then it was hard it was, it was heartbreaking honestly i felt because of his age and seeing him grow up in the academy, I genuinely felt like he was my son <laughs> committing something so heinous. I was just like, no, Mason, why? What? I was just, I was, yeah. my head was always over the place, and I, it put me in a, it put me in a, in a very thoughtful process. Like for that whole day, I was just thinking, man, I was just like, how, how has this happened? And loads of things happen to to footballers at a young age. Um, money fame different kind of people coming to you for different things whether it be men or women and 
to handle all of that, for me, I I don't know how that that how you deal with that. Um, and you guys will probably know a bit better how to move about that. So Mason going through what he's gone through has led him to that point. And I'm just sitting there wondering, is there anything that the people around him could have done better, whether it be his parents, uh, whether it be the club, because he's been there from such a young age, um, and even teammates. So like you, you guys are, you guys are, uh, are players. If, if that was your teammate and you are right next to them now in that situation, hearing this news or, or seeing um, all this to come out, how do you respond? But not only just as a teammate, but as a Christian teammate as well to many players, they probably don't have a faith. So how would you guys respond to this situation if that was the guy that's right next to you playing uh, week in, week out with? I'll go, Kenj. I think um, being a footballer, I've been around some of the most richest, influential uh, entertainers of our age. I've been, I've been at some really high level clubs, and I've had conversations with players about Jesus, and they've said, and they said, "Yeah, that's all good, John, but I don't need God. I've got everything." Hmm. And uh, in actual fact, guys, if you haven't got God, you haven't got Jesus, you haven't got anything. Jesus is not just the cherry on top of the cake. He's the base. He's the rest. He's the ingredients. He's the table. He's the ha- he's the he he is everything. And so, if you haven't got him, you haven't got anything. So Jesus said, "It's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle." Why? Because rich people feel like they're already in heaven. They feel like they're already you know self-made. And why would they need God? So I've had that kind of resistance talking to players rich 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 influential players before but mason greenwood's situation of course he's rich and influential and talented but at that moment when that happened he now knows he's in trouble and that there is a good place for the gospel to come forth because mm-hmm. most people they, 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 they don't think they're sick why would you need a vaccine if you don't think you're sick what the gospel does it shows you look bro you're sick and you need the gospel here's a vaccine for it you know so I know that it's not teammates' responsibility to help him or the club's sole responsibility to fix him. But as ambassadors of God, now us as Christians, as apostles sent into football, that means sent ones. As people who are, we have the light of Christ, we have the answer, we have the truth. God now sends us into this sphere of football, not just to be a nice person or just to be positive or just to be a good player. He's now sent us out as his hands and feet into a realm that doesn't know him. Yeah. You know how hard it is for a pastor to access Mason Greenwood? Do you know how hard it is for um, an evangelist or a Christian, just a normal Christian, to access these people? They're, it's hard to access, especially at Man United, it's hard to reach these people. Yeah. But us as players, we can now come into a place where it's quite isolated. And with a player like him or someone who's going through a tough time or going through a nationwide scandal... That there is a place where the gospel can come in and really hit home in a way that it can be received as, oh my gosh, I need this lifeline. Like, I need Jesus. So, listen, whether you've committed a small crime, big crime, no crime, the gospel's for everyone. Mm-hmm. To No matter what status of culture or society you find yourself at, billionaire or homeless person, the gospel is a, a, a evil playing field. And for those who don't know, the gospel means good news. The bad news is that we've all sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3, 23. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So, you know, there's a lot of... I can imagine for Greenwood, like, paint the picture, guys, yeah? Like, his worst moment is in the nationwide press. Imagine you mining your worst moment ever. Like, the worst I'm talking about is now in the nationwide press. We, it would be really tough for us. Like we'd, yeah. we'd be embarrassed, we'd be ashamed, we'd feel... It would be very difficult. Um, that's what this young player's gone through. And I don't, don't know his background. From what I've heard about his background, he it was quite troubled at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, as a normal teammate, of course, you want to kind of encourage and be there, but also be sensitive because you don't know what's, what's really happened. Mm-hmm. But as a believer, we're called to reach all people. 
you know and so as that's my kind of advice from a christian christian player's perspective as a footballer missionary of how we can reach those who are most in need you know that's so good job that's so so good i also feel um feel that as well and we've been called to love we've been called to love um to love the people that we're around you know to love our neighbors as our we love ourselves and it's also to love our enemies you know so if that's what we're called to do and especially someone that's your teammate and the one that you're around you know he's also going through that process within himself and for him i also think like for him to have allegedly done that it had to have come from somewhere you know so i'm passionate about you know also getting to the root of these things of you know what actually caused that and he must have had to go through a process or have to have gone through something um, for this to also have occurred. You know, the Bible also says that it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but it's the sick. You know, so that just encourages me also. Um, That's good. Really good. To, 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 to you know, to, to be there for, for people because... You know, Jesus was around prostitutes, was around all these different um, people. He didn't come for the he didn't come for the healthy. He came for the sick. You know, and we're also called to 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 help and be there for 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 the sick. So that was that's really what I feel as well. And um, to be, especially if you're around people that are hurt and that are going through that are going through suffering. You know, regardless of what they've done, we've been called to love um, one another. So yeah, that's just what I wanted to add as well. That's so true. So true, Kenji. And that's not just in, just pertain to football. Um, that's just everyday life. Like everyone around us, like we've we are all surrounded by people who have gone through things, going through something, have have done potentially something that that you would you would you'll see it and raise your eyebrow and be like, "How have you done that?" But yet, when we were in Christ, we're called to reach out to those people. And if we're busy on the sidelines judging just looking at them, who's going to help them? That's like seeing it, someone drowning and saying, why Why can't they swim? Mm. Well, they clearly can't. So just, what, what are we going to do? Yeah. Are we going to throw the boy? Are we going to jump in to, to, yeah. to help them? Or are we, are we just going to just stand there? Um, so it's not just a thing within football in terms of there's the many footballers who have got all these things and all these issues, but it's, it's everyday life. All of us can, can help and put our arm out. All of us need to recognize that these people, everyone walks around us in the same situation. So what you said is true. We are, we are called to love and we're called to reach out. And it might seem strange to the world of why would you help this person when they've done so wrong, when they've done so bad, mm-hmm. why do they deserve to be helped, to be saved? Well, the question I'll throw back is why do I? Yes. Why do you deserve help? deserve to be saved because there's nothing we can do to deserve such thing christ came yeah. down to do that for us anyway um, Amen. So, Amen. yeah like when 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 i'm hearing that that's what i was thinking for for people who are listening yes we were talking about football we are talking about a certain situation in uh in the highest level of of, of the sport but you this can trickle down and be in any situation in life the only difference is you don't have the whole media, the whole world, the whole nation, watching people go through these kind of situations. Um, and on that note, when we talk about the culture of, of, of the nation, the culture of, of the world, um, we are very quick to, to condemn. I know uh, in, with, with footballers, there's lots of scandals that come out with, for different players, lots of uh, accusations of various different things uh, that come out. And as a Christian, sometimes I wonder, as a Christian football fan, I sit there and wonder, I'm like, how do I respond to those? Because being on Twitter, being on social media, it's, it's, it's very easy to see the mob turn. Mm. As soon as something is tweeted, as soon as news breaks, it's bam, that person has done that. He is horrible. He's this, da, da, da. they need to be punished or they need what kind of 
judgment that that person thinks they deserve. And it's, in this situation, it's very easy to just, just go on the attack. And even if you may hear the images, oh, here, sorry, hear the, uh, the audio and see the images, you can be convicted in your heart and be like, boom, like this has happened. So how do you respond to that? And that's why I want to ask, like, how do we as Christians respond to seeing accusations, seeing um, all these things come out on something like social media where you see everyone else attacking, attacking, going for it? Do we join in with the condemna condemnation? Or do we take a different stance and seek wisdom mm. in, in these situations? I like this a lot. I like this a lot. And something that I'm became aware of is that we got to be very slow to speak and very quick to listen. Like, and see it for what it really is, you know? And, you know, sometimes you can see something um, and not know where that came from and not know where that information actually came from as well. And especially in the news, there's so much that, come out in the news there's so much things that happen but for me I'm like for me personally I'm very slow to put um that is it you know like that's it and that's it you know we've got to let things play out we've got to let things um yeah let it let it play out and then we give our opinion let it settle with it sit with it really feel into it pray on it and um and ask God for, for wisdom on it as well um on how to handle that situation, especially. Because also, you know, as you're speaking, KJ, um, something that really came into my heart as we were speaking, um, especially in the football world as players, um, to much is given, much is required. You know, to so if we are, especially with all the pressures and everything that happens in in, in football, um, I'm li I'm going a little bit off of the of the question that you that you asked here, but I just felt also like as players, there's so much pressure that comes with what we do. There's so much things, expectations that need to be met and, and things like that. And that and that takes, that's hard to manage. You know, I've shared also my story a little bit on here about how, you know, seeking, seeking things that, that I shouldn't be going to, you know, to fill that void that I was feeling if I'm not playing on a Saturday um, or I'm being overlooked and I'm working hard, but I'm not getting opportunities. You know, there's certain things that I did that I'm not... Um, that I'm not um, proud of um, also in my life. So if I'm not proud of the things that, and, and thank God that that didn't come out into the news, you know, that didn't come out into the, into the limelight um, because I don't know how I would react or how I would handle that situation. And that's why, you know, there's also a soul behind the person that is being on show. There's also a person behind um, someone that's being in that front of that newspaper. You might see just a picture of the guy, but that's also a soul, that's also a person. And we're very quick to see it as just, you know, someone, sometimes we don't look at it as as that. Um, so that's really what was the, what I feel on that, brother. Great point, Kenji. And you know what, guys? As believing people, we have a tool that non-believers don't believe in. That's prayer. Yeah. And being a Christian... Getting to a place where when we see something, our initial response isn't our opinion. It's what does the word say and how can I play a role in praying? Listen, if we were if we were to be able to really see life for what it really is, so the physical, the supernatural, the invisible, the visible, we would see that our prayers are way more powerful than we think. You might think your opinion and your physical response to Things in general, not just Mason Greenwood now, things in general is, is more powerful, but your prayers are like atomic bombs in the spirit. So when you lift up prayers for people, for yourself, for your situation, for your future, for different things, for your environment, for your calling, with football, whatever sphere of life you're called to, you'll start to realize that actually God's called me to be an intercessor. That means I can actually stand in the gap and pray for people who can't pray, who don't pray. And when this Mason Greenwood thing came out, yeah, we spoke about it as leaders and ball, ballers and God. We got, we said, you know, what? we need to pray, both mm. for all parties involved. You know, for him, for his partner, for the situation, 
Because God loves both of them. God loves all of us. And he never... We are supposed to deal with people the way that God deals with us. So that means we are very gentle with people and we don't condemn them. It's okay to condemn actions and behavior, but we can't condemn people. Mm. People do crazy things. And if we or the viewers or listeners were to be given all that celebrities and young stars get at a young age, they would find it also increasingly difficult to make wise decisions, especially when you've not been raised in wisdom. Yeah. I remember you're just looking at, you know, Justin Bieber, right? Like this guy, he had a yeah. whole following called, they were they called the Believers. Believers, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and at 14, he had grown women like fainting in front of him and millions and millions of pounds, millions and millions of fans. Like, that's not normal. <laughs> that's true. That's not normal. And whenever you put people in the position to be worshipped, they're going to fall. And footballers are also, we like to maybe hide it, but it's true. They are worshipped to a certain level. If you go to a game, you'll see grown men go, we love, like, raising yeah. their hand, clapping, like, chanting to play. Bust up, bust up, bust up. <laughs> Kenji, give us a wave. Kenji, Kenji. <laughs> Go, KJ. You're on the sidelines doing your team. Go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's Honestly, why, that's like, my fiance cheering me on when I do Oh, I love it. <laughs> but like, uh, that's that's the reality of what we're, we're in a game of people are idolized. Um, and so, look, moving forward, guys, when you hear news, I encourage you pray. Get someone together, pray with us. Say, guys, listen, Deli Ali's going through this. We support his team. Let's pray for him. Um, Mason Green has gone through this. We're Man United fans. Let's pray for him. This player, John's going through this. I just heard this. Let's pray for him. Like, pray first. And your opinion in the whole matter isn't the most important. Like, our opinion here today, I know you go, we want followers on the YouTube and we want, you know, but that's, we couldn't care less about that more, more than the truth. <laughs> but more like, we're trying to lead you to God's opinion and, and to the and to the reality of grace and the reality of, of truth and what the word says. So um, we don't condemn any behavior from anyone that's outside the word of God. Yet we don't throw that person away. We lift them before God. Why? Because they're in need of grace. So that's mm -hmm. an encouragement to us as fans, players. Mm -hmm. When you see something as a believer, pray for them. Because I was thinking with Mason Greenwood, like, who's praying for him right now? Mm -hmm. What if he's got no Christians in his family? Mm -hmm. And the partner as well. Who's praying for her? You know, the enemy wants to use this to, you know, try and cause havoc. But I believe God wants to use this to bring restoration as well. So that's that's my take on it, KJ and Kenji. No, I like, no, I, I like that. I like that. And that's true. And especially about the praying part. And I just want to say quickly for people listening, people watching, we we know there's 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 two people involved in situation. It may seem like we're only focusing on 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 one and the Mason Greenwood, and he's the uh, perpetrator or the accused in this situation. We just want to say we're not forgetting about his partner. We're not forgetting about the the victim in this. We, we like John said, we want to pray for both of them um, in this situation as well because she is. They are still together, so they're still in that in their own relationship. But I just want people to uh, remember that we are just focusing on on Mason because that's the topic of 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 the case study of the person and the player that we are focusing on not because we're ignoring the, the troubles of, 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 of a victim. Um, so, yeah, I just want to make that clear for everyone so they can understand where, where we're coming from, from in this conversation. But, yeah, no, I, I agree uh, so much with, with, with what both of you have said. And, yeah, being in, being like, like you said, being a fan, have I ever valued some Christians who I know are Christians and football fans together and be like, yo, Yo, this is happening in the world of football. Even though we're not directly involved in the sport, let's let's go and let's go and pray. Let's go and help intercede in these situations. Yeah. I haven't done that because he hasn't. It, it doesn't cross your mind. But seeing these kind of uh, these things unfold, we're as much needed as John and Kenji in the world of football. Christian mm -hmm. fans. I need as much as the Christian players in the world of football because there are two sides to it. There are many sides to it, but there's 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 the side of of us on the sidelines. And if we and if yeah. we can't support, how much support can the players get? Yeah. So guys, remember we have a role to play 
it is maybe ballers in God, but we're all in God. You know what I'm saying? Like That's, we're all yeah. in God. And it's a Amen. sport we all love. So let us also take up the mantle, take up the mission in football and support not just John and Kenji, but all these players uh, that we, we love to watch because they're doing something essentially for our entertainment. You know, they're, they're serving us as much as they, as much as we serve them, they serve us. So it's a back and forth. So guys, let's go in, let's go and give that support. Um, but talking about support though, Manchester United, obviously is the club that um, Mason Greenwood is at. And they had to handle this situation because he, he's their player. Um, he's had, the, again, again, just to reiterate, he's been there since the age, I believe of eight years old he's been in the the institution of manchester united so they they've had to also make decisions be part of the process think about how to move forward just as a we think about moving forward manchester united as as a, as a club have had to think about how to move forward and from the time that initially broke uh, the the news broke out about mason greenwood to now it's been like 18 months process and during that process um Mason Greenwood has been has been uh, the charges were were dropped. Manchester United said they're going to do their own investigation, and that investigation took over a year. And during that investigation, there were different leaks of Man United wanted him to play, Man United want to do this, Man United want to do that. So there was leaks throughout this whole process, and then they finally come to the decision, which is that he will never play for Manchester United again. Um, he will remain on their books until his contract runs out. But in terms of playing for Manchester United, that will not, not be happening. He may, he can be sold. He may be loaned out. If he is to, to go on loan and return, that isn't an opportunity for him to get back into the first team like many loans are. This is a straight, he, he will not be playing for Manchester United again. And I, I just want to, uh, I'm just wondering... In terms of the process, um, from what you guys have seen of Manchester United, how well do you think you have, they have handled it? Because many fans and many journalists and many people within industry have not felt happy. They are not happy with how Manchester United have handled it, especially towards the end of the process where it was come to make a decision. It looked like Man United were going to bring him back. Leaks came out of the decision. Social uproar. And then Man United have U-turned and then decided not to uh, go about bringing him back. So in terms of the process from what you guys have seen, what do you guys think of, of Man United's handling of the situation? KJ, before we answer, like, you're a United fan. Can we... Yeah. I'm not aware of the fans' opinions of how the yeah. club have handled it. Can we get what you're hearing from the fans' perspective of why they're disappointed or why... Yeah. So from the fans' perspective, um, they, they wanted... Well, I say we we wanted more of a swift swifter conclusion to to the whole situation. Uh, many fans believe that he has done what he's accused of. So therefore, if he has done that, why is it even a thought about bringing him back? He should just be gone. You know what I mean? It's like kicked out of the club, nothing to do with us anymore. It should be just stopped, uh, banned from playing football. And and part of me agrees with that kind of sentiment in terms of he shouldn't be allowed to play how if i'm trying to be if i'm totally honest but then i also understand that it's not just as simple as okay we think you've done it boom get out of here there's there's loads of different processes and legal situation that you have to go through so i understand why the length of time happened but for me it felt like there was an air of indecision an air of um and are in um I, I feel like the lack of leadership and decisiveness is a, is a worry for manchester united and i think because of how the club has been ran and how we fans feel about the club in general already, I think this situation, those emotions are heightened because now it's not just about football, it's, it's, why, it's a wider issue. And seeing the same kind of deliberation, leaks of information come out, it really just it left a, a, a sour taste in the fans' mouth. So It's a tough one though, isn't it, Kid? Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Oh, but right. we, that most fans... Is a tough one. Yeah, most fans literally wanted a swifter resolution. Me personally, from the moment the charges were dropped, I would have liked to heard some kind of um, specific time frame, specific 
uh, process to how they're going to do it. And then when it came to the end of that time frame, execute that. The fact that it went on for so long and then there was, we're going to bring it back. And then, no, we're not actually because of this time. For me, I'm just like that. Like, I, I would, I don't like that, you know, I mean, personally as a fan. But um, but this is why we have these team talks because you guys can give a perspective that I can't necessarily see. So, so yeah, that's why the fans were very much unhappy with how this has been handled. Uh, personally, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I listen. Football clubs are there to run football matches and football, you know, mm-hmm. business. And so, when something like this comes up, it's it's not uncharted territory, but it's it has to be dealt with very sensitively, you know. And uh, to cut a long story short, of my opinion, footballers, as loved as they are, they're just a commodity to clubs. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Messi's the best ever, in my opinion. Some people like Ronaldo, and other Ronaldo's amazing. But if something doesn't work for a business and it doesn't make sense financially, then as a brand, you have to protect that business. And I get it, I'm a brand owner. Like you, you have to make decisions that protect what your original assignment is or your purpose is. And if they were to call him back with the air of mystery and 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 con- uh, controversy that surrounds his situation, it, it, it's it's a, it's. I mean, sponsors would have fallen out, fans mm-hmm. would have gone crazy. I mean, I can see why they've done what they've done. Um, and so they have now fought to not clear his name but his name's cleared right now and he can play football again somewhere else so they've almost like if you look at it from this perspective they fought to have their own case um mm-hmm. their own yeah. uh, investigation investigation yeah. and yeah. is it through that investigation that he's found clear uh it's through so because the charges were dropped it's okay it's technically yeah not he's not guilty or he nor is he guilty. So it's, it's a no trial, good. basically. Yeah, it's a no trial. So there's no clearing of anything. There's nothing to be cleared right now. So, um, so, yeah. so, so Man United have essentially allowed their their protege to spend spend time away from the limelight. His his name he can now com, uh, c- uh, continue his career elsewhere, but not there. So yeah. he has got a new he has got a chance to to kick on again or to play in mm-hmm. at some sort of place. He's got a chance. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was having this conversation with a teammate the other day. He's not a Christian. And he said, and I said something like, uh, um, about Greenwood, bless him. He went, John, why did you say bless him for? Mm-hmm. What, do you think he should be forgiven? I said, I said, uh, all people deserve a chance of a, sorry, all people can deserve a second chance. Th- that word can is so important. Yeah. If there's remorse and there's, there's desire mm-hmm. to want to change and, then all people do deserve a chance to to better themselves and, and to show that they they can move forward. Um, so I don't know where he goes from here. I, I don't know, you know. Um, but yeah, I think but that it, this also does lead us to that word we to, you know we keep mentioning is re- is redemption. Yeah. You're like, if God left me in my mess, I would have my, my life would still be a mess. But He has forgiven me. And listen, when we do sin, right, we can still be in trouble in the public eye and still be in right standing with God. And that's, a, and that's a tough place to be mm. that God's forgiven us and we receive his forgiveness, but there's still consequences of what we have done in, 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 in the physical realm. And that's what sin does. Sin can mess up stuff, but God can clean your slate, but there still can be repercussions mm. to pay for what we have done in our lives. So listen, I, 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 I think this is, very difficult for a club to 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 handle. Um, listen, you're talking about the biggest club in the world, probably as a brand, KJ. You're not talking yeah. about, and you're not talking about a young player who's never played first team, young like or players. And like we're talking about the the next yeah. up kid. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know. It's a tough one. Yeah, KJ. What do you think about before we get onto what happens next for 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 Mason? What do you think of Man United's? Um, handling of it of the situation and obviously the decision that has now been made i think i think to be honest like like john said it's an it's an organization you know the organization has to make a decision on what they think is best for the club they don't necessarily care about the player 
you know, I'm not saying that they don't care because I don't know them. But I mean, as a business, Manchester United, they're just thinking about their image, how they look, what they, what's going to, like, like John said, like, it's all about the sponsors as well. Like a lot of sponsors might then pull out and stuff like that. You know, there's so much more that goes um, into these things. And it's, it's territory that obviously I don't, I don't necessarily know, um, you know, because I don't, yeah, it's, it's, it's a business side and they have to make decisions that um, aren't easy as well. You know, they're, they're probably thinking every day, like, you know, the coach might be saying, hey, I need him. But they're saying, no, we can't because of this. So they're trying to see, I don't know what, what the situation is. But all I do know is, is as a player, um, Mason Greenwood right now, he has unbelievable talent. You know, he has God God gifted talent and he just he just desires to play football. And um and like John shared as well, like, you know, he like everyone, they I believe that they deserve a second chance, you know, especially if he's taking responsibility. He's uh he's looking to to be a better man, to be a better father, as I read on the statement. I hope that's also a, a reflection of what's going on in his heart as well. Um, because that's what the Lord cares about the most, the heart. He doesn't really care about what, what you know, what, what we do, but it's the, the heart posture um, of it. So I just hope that he also, um, you know, what he says in the, it says in the statement is also happening in his heart and that he can, that he can really grow from this experience and, and be the man that God has really called him to be as well. Um, and I, and I believe that he's his, um, his talent will, will will speak for itself, but I, you know, I'm I'm a footballer myself, and all I desire to do is play football, mm -hmm. you know. So I hope that he gets to, you know, play football at the level that, um, that 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 he that he can, and really fulfill the talent and the purpose that that God has for him. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah, I, I th <laughs> this is where those perspectives are, are different in terms of like the, the club handling it, because I think because we are very much outside of it, and we. The way that we see our clubs sometimes, the, the clubs that we support, we some people see it as a beacon um, of of morality, of of uh, how um, we can be better and all these different things. I don't pertain to that kind of thinking, but I know many fans do. We got to remember it as well, like fo like football is, is actually a religion to some people. They mm. that that is their that is where their worship goes. They they act, some people call their stadiums, their church or their cathedral. So that's where the, some people are at. So the way that the club operates really matters to them in, in that sense. And I feel like, I think as fans, we uh, we can have a different perspective on on how we, uh, how clubs operate compared to obviously football because you guys see the inner work, well, as much as in the workings that you guys can, you guys see that. So, so, you know, I understand that perspective and I think as fans, maybe we can just like, be a bit more understanding towards the club officials and, and the decision makers in these situations because, you know, listen, I don't think it's easy for any any person to make a decision on on a situation such as this. So, I think I think that is fair. But we, what you guys both went into there was talking about what next for basically for Mason and um, as, as a person, as a footballer, but as a person, as a man. And the word redemption is something that I feel like in the world right now is not a word that is used um, very often. Like we see cancel culture a lot. Um, do one bad thing and that's it. You, should, you shouldn't be able to do anything anymore. Um, kicked off social media, lose your job, um, be chastised by society. Um, and in this situation, that is, that is definitely the same for what he's done. But as, as Christians, we do believe in redemption and we do believe people can be redeemed and what does that look like specifically? Like, what kind of things do you believe that Mason Greenwood could do to show that redemption, to show that he is growing as a person? Because he has, he has as a child with the with the with the same woman with his partner. They have still they are still together, and now they've formed a family. So, where does where does he go now after all of this? The conclusion is is there of of what he can do with Man United, but they're still together. What? Where does he go next? Where does redemption lie for Mason Greenman? I think, like I shared before, I think the biggest thing is that he, that I pray that he's taken responsibility. You know, that he's taken responsibility. That he that he's looked himself in the mirror and said, you know what, <laughs> I fell short of what I'm really, who of who I am. 
you know, and I think when you take responsibility um, for your actions, the things that you've done, from then you can then grow um, as a man um, and also in his in his career, you know, as I said, you know, he just d desires to play football. And I hope that even from, you know, acknowledging the mistakes that he's made, acknowledging these things, to understand that from then on, you know, he can, he, he also feels like he can then make decisions from a place of humility. You know, I think he's gone through a big place, big transition of, um, you know, being at the top. I think I, I, when, you know, when Mason Green was playing, he was arguably the best, one of the best players. You know, he was probably arguably the be one of the best, um, you know, young players coming through. And I think when you get hit with something like this, humility really kicks in of like, reality kicks in of, you know, I'm not that person. Because like like a footballer is in itself, you know, football comes to an end. But who are you beyond football? Yeah. And it's the identity again, you know. So I believe like it's just the identity of I, I just pray that he finds himself. And as you find yourself, like my testimony is as I started to find myself is that is when I found Jesus. You know, so my ultimate prayer is that he finds, you know, um, the creator that he finds Jesus Christ to, to really impact his, impact his heart the way he did mine. Um, and that's, and that's what I hope for him. No, really good. You, you know, I, I've realized, um, look, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a married man. I've been married for how many, like 12, 13 years now. And I can have a, a whole year, right. With not being in my wife's bad books. Yeah. But I could do one thing wrong. And it's like, trust is gone or like that's that's the, that's the kind of yeah. kind of kind of kind of reality it is like one mistake can really have a big impact so what mason needs to do now and this is not me saying yes it is but people in general when there has been an error they need to prove their faithfulness again over time over time and i i hope that him and his partner they can go on to have a healthy relationship healthy marriage, raise healthy, wonderful, you know, young Greenwoods. Um, and that at the end of his career, this will be a blip that changed his character. Because listen, yeah. guys, we, um, I, I once heard this quote and it's stuck with me for years. And it was, don't let your talent take you to a place your character can't keep you. Yeah. Like our gifts make a way for us, the Bible says, but it doesn't keep you there. Your character is what sustains you there. The Bible doesn't say your character gets you something. It says your, your gift will make a way for you. Now, whether your character is aligned with what comes with the trappings of the gift, that's something else. And I know um, that the academies and whatnot, the focus is football. It's not, not necessarily people to raise people of, 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 of honor, of people of respect, of repute or character. And now character, you know, to be fair, at Spurs and other clubs, they, they, do try, they really do try represent this club you know you speak here about Roy Keane and these kind of guys like there's a standard at clubs of character performance of of, of, of mindset but that's why ball isn't God exists of one of you like we want to try and and come alongside players from a young age and disciple them you know disciple means to raise them in the principles and in the word of God um, and that's why I am so slow to judge people who have not encountered Jesus yet I, I yeah like, what's your moral standard? What's your, like, I don't know if your family's failed or, or done well a good job in raising you. Like, I, I, I had an encounter with someone not long ago and that, the guy tried to offend me. And all my, and so the people I know are like, well, why weren't you offended? I said, listen, I don't know what this guy's going through, man. Hurting people hurt people. Mm -hmm. So I really hope that over a long period of time, he will prove that he's wise and dark and, He'll go on to have a successful life, not just football, you know, because football is a small part of us. So great point, Kenji. That's where I stand with that, you know. So um, listen, I remember there was a, a, a Sky Sports pundit. He spat in someone's face. Do you remember that? Do you, do you, do you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He spat it, on camera, he spat on. Uh, do, you know, uh, you, do you remember who it is? Yeah, of course I do. Oh, okay, I'm about to say, I'm about to say. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In the car. In the car. Yeah. That for me, that's a mad, that's a mad moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's on camera. Yet this guy is on our Sky Sports every day.
every day. He's he, he's he's now a pundit every day without failure. So the the public, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not putting them on the same level or whatnot. But yeah. I'm saying yeah, that yeah, yeah. you can do something that's like that's that's terrible, and the public can still find a way to get used to you again, to trust where you are now, you know. So I hope that will be the same for Greenwood in some sort of capacity, you know. Me as a as 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 someone outside looking in, someone who actually for as a fan was hoping for everything for this young man. I literally, I wanted him England or or Jamaica, uh, England <laughs> number or number nine <laughs> for for years to come. Uh, man United's top leading, like I was like, yo, he could be Man United's leading goal scorer, he could be England's leading goal scorer, he could be up there in the Premier League greats. I was as someone who had that kind of view. I honestly hope that he has changed as a as a person. Like this whole ordeal, he realize. I hope he realizes where the source of that came from. What mm. led him to that point? I hope he realizes that and is able to to search within himself and reflect and and deal with that root that root cause. Because I feel like sometimes when people go through things or do certain things, they they might deal with the symptoms like outbursts of anger or or harsh words or, or 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 mean actions i think people can deal with those things but the root of that yeah. what makes you do that in the first place i feel like many people don't actually explore and search and i hope he does search that i hope he does find that and the best way to find that and to change that is through christ true so i i, I do hope that there he has an encounter where he can really delve deep into himself and and deal with the things inside and then therefore the fruits of what he then produces after that will be of love kindness patience all these all the fruits of the of the um oh, what, sorry spirit, all the fruits of what spirit. is it spirit i was about to yeah, say spirit yeah. but no, there's gifts right. of fruits yeah i was right okay yeah i was getting the mix up but yeah all the um I hope all the fruits of the spirit like come throughout him. And he is a better father because and a husband, because there's two other people right now with him that are going to be with him daily, day by day, that have to be beside him. And I do hope he he grows so he can have a wife, be with his partner, and be the best husband he can be. If he has to go on and have more children, he can be the best father that he can be. Because growing up, his his child, they're going to throw that at him. They're, they're go that child is going to go through life with this tag of your dad did this. So I hope that he, he can change so that when people respond and say that to this child, they can be like, well, no, my dad has changed and he this is the great man that he's become and I am product of that, you know? So, mm -hmm. so yeah, like I really, I really am hopeful and I feel redemption is, is possible. Yeah. You just you've just got to you've got to seek it you know you've got to you've got to want that you've got to actually realize that you need it as well um and you need to go through that and i know many people many fans might hear what i'm saying be like you want good for him how dare you well i want good for him because i want good for his partner i want good for his child i want good for all the people who live in his life i, I think it's insane that people can still want him to be this evil figure but at the same time, be scared for his for his child and partner. For me, I don't I, I don't want that. I don't want them to live in fear. I don't want him to still be a bad person. So, so yeah, like I honestly do. I, I believe that redemption is there, and he's just gotta seek that. And, and I want that for him. And in terms of football, wherever he ends up is where he ends up. I know he may have the talent to be to be one of the best, but. Sometimes your actions lead you down a, a different career route, so he has to deal with that. And I hope that he he learns from this this experience and and goes forward as as a better as a better man. From the bottom of my heart, like I really do. So yeah. Whew. Yo, guys, we've come to a uh, everyone. Come to the end. Everyone today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've come to the end of this one. But you know oh, why, yeah. like guys, like we, we want to talk about topics that people maybe not want to avoid, but you know, this is this is this is this is pressing. This is more than just a result on a Sunday or Saturday or a league, you know, league table. This is this is we're talking about people's souls here, you know. We, mm. 
And one of our statements in Ballers in God is we put souls before goals. So we love scoring. Kenji scored the other day and, you know, I scored not too long ago because Kenji's trying to copy me and that. But like, listen, we <laughs> we love to score goals and, and achieve in football. But more than that, like we are interested in people's souls, their well-being. And the Bible says, what is it profit a man if he gains the whole world, he loses his soul? So, yeah, we, we want the best for everyone because God desires the best for everyone. Um and, and that's, that's why we make these podcasts. So listen, if there's any other topics you guys want us to talk about moving forward, message us, DM us on Ballers in God on our Instagram, you know, email us at ballersandgod.gmail.com. Let us know because we want to serve you guys and give you content that, you know, would encourage you, but also, you know, would interest you as well. So now I really, really enjoyed this one today, guys. Yeah, it's been, it's been good. And before we head out, Kenji wants to bring us a, a, a verse. And the verse... Oh, hey. The verse he's got for us is beautiful, man. So take it away, Kenji. Yeah, so something that we do on uh, on the podcast team talks is is end with a verse and something to encourage us um, with everything that we've heard today as well, um, which was a heavy one. Um, and I hope that it landed on good soil uh, for everyone that's listened to it. Um, because it really did come from um, from our hearts. We didn't <laughs> we didn't we didn't prepare, but we knew that God had an assignment for it, and we just made ourselves available. Um, to to share the things that are on our heart. So the vo- the verse that is on my heart is in Romans five nineteen, which says, "For just as though the no, for just as through the disobedience of the one man the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man the many will be made righteous." And I just felt so encouraged when I listened to, when I read this scripture, um, because by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, but by one man's obedience, many were made righteous. And I just wanted to share that for us all, to be that one, to be that one in our family, to be that one in our um realm of where God has placed us, if that's at work or wherever God decides, you know, be that one so that the ones after us, the many more will also become righteous. So yeah, I just felt that in my in my yes. spirit. Thank you, Kenji. And just just before you pray for us, Kenji, and pray for the situation. Um this this verse you just shared it it, it 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 encapsulates all that we spoke about today because through one man's disobedience, Adam, when Adam sinned, like sin is now in humanity, and it's surprising sometimes the way in which it, it creeps its ugly head. But we are all in need of of grace and forgiveness. So where Adam failed, Jesus Christ came and succeeded. So because of him, we now have access to righteousness. No matter how bad you are, no matter how far away you feel from him. No matter how mm. far you've fallen or sins or things you are really embarrassed about, you know, there is still forgiveness at the cross of Jesus Christ. And so if you're listening to this today and you've been far from God and you're not where you feel like you should be, just repent and come home. His arms are open wide and he loves you with an everlasting love. And his grace is available to all those who turn back to him. Like Kenji, KJ said earlier, redemption is available, but you have to seek it. Forgiveness is available. We have to seek it in Jesus Christ. K- K- Kenji, if you don't mind praying for us before we close, bro, that'd be yes. wonderful. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives, Lord. We thank you what you're doing in the Ballers in God podcast, in the team talks, and in what you're doing in Ballers in God in general. We know that your hand is upon it, Lord, and we just pray that your will will be done in Ballers in God as well. Heavenly Father, right now we have heard some truths. We've heard some things. And we've heard about redemption, Heavenly Father. And we know that you can turn a mess into a message. We know that you can turn a test into a testimony. And I just pray for also Mason right now and his family. I pray for your hand to be upon their family, Heavenly Father. And I pray that you will turn that mess into a message. You will turn that test into a testimony, Heavenly Father. Because you are... um, You are Lord of all lords. You are the King of all kings, Heavenly Father. And we thank you that we can have a relationship with you, Lord. Lord, help us to really seek you and seek you with all our hearts. Because we know 
seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added, Heavenly Father. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you for what you're doing in Ballers in God. And we just pray for your will to be done in our lives and through us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Kenji. And uh, thank you, John, uh, for being a part of this podcast. Uh, thank you for everyone uh, who, who watched or who listened. Um, I know this one is, is a heavy one, but I really hope and pray that you guys let the words into your ears and let it seep into your hearts and really, really digest what was being said and meditate on, on what was being said because it, it, these, these topics are ones that affect us beyond the, the football pitch and beyond the sport. So please, guys, uh, thank you uh, for everything you're doing. And one last thing before we go, I just need to remind you all that we are sponsored by 316 Clo. One of the best programming <laughs> ranges <laughs> in the world. Not only is it got fine garms, it's got wonderful hoodies, t-shirts, shorts, but it also is a movement of faith as well. So please make sure you go and support that um, and support the, the movement of, of 316 Club because it's uh it's, it's breaking ground and I and I believe in it. I also Love it as well. They look fresh, man. Make me look good. So, yes, guys, go go over to 316 Clothes Instagram. Go follow them. Go to the store. Get all the fresh clothes that you want. And, yeah, maybe uh, maybe John might sort us out with a discount code for the podcast. Who knows? Isn't it? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yes, in, but until next time, guys, I hope you all stay blessed. Have a wonderful week. And we'll catch you guys soon. Thank you. Yes, guys. Thank you so much. Make sure you like and subscribe as well. God bless, guys. <laughs>